Hello and welcome back. My name is Greg Huss. I am one of the co-founders of Northsidebound.com. As you guys know, I am one of the co-hosts of the Cubs on Deck podcast, a podcast dedicated entirely to the Cubs minor league farm system. Today I'm here uh, not as a part of the, the podcast, but I'm here back on the YouTube feed. I'm here to talk a little bit about my most recent post over at Northsidebound.com. I wrote about my top 40 Cubs prospects in the system. So I know this is a fun activity. This is something we like to do at Northside Bound. I know fans love to see prospect rankings. And uh, honestly, like it's fun putting those together. It's a little bit stressful, especially when you get down to the, what, 20 to 40 range, 20 to 60 range in terms of ranking prospects in the Cubs farm system. So I think that's why I went so deep. That's why I went so all the way down to 40 in terms of the rankings this year. Uh, in the past, I've done 40, 40 prospects, but in the past, what I've done is really I've put together a ranking of the top 20 arms and the top 20 bats in the Cubs farm system. This year, I, I threw them all together. I have the top 40 there. You can find that at northsidebound.com. But what I'm going to do here is I want to run through in a few different videos. I'm not going to run through all top 40. If you want to hear some a rundown, a, a synopsis of both my top 40 and Greg Zumak, a fellow writer over at Northsidebound, you can go check out uh, on this feed, on this YouTube feed, you can go check out our uh, Cubs on Deck podcast where we kind of ran down the most important elements of our top 40 rankings. Today, I'm here to cover rankings number 40 through 31. So I'm going to re release four different videos. Today is kind of starting off at the bottom of this list, 40 through 31. And I'm going to start at number 40. Number 40, I have Jonathan Perlaza ranked as the 40th best prospect in the Cubs farm system uh, this offseason. And that... <laughs> We're starting off with a caveat right away. And my, the reason why this is a caveat with Jonathan Perlaza is that right now he's not technically officially part of the Cubs organization. I know that sounds really weird, but the deal is that he became a minor league free agent after this past 2022 regular season. He was eligible to be selected in the Rule 5 draft. He's eligible to be signed as a, a minor league free agent with any team. He's a free agent right now. He can be signed. He is not technically a member of the Cubs farm system. But there's been rumors out there, there's been talks about he has agreed to a successor contract to return back to the Cubs organization. It makes a ton of sense for the Cubs to do that, right? He represents major league outfield depth in the minor league system. And the Cubs need that really bad. They saw injuries to Alexander Canario. They've seen injuries to Brennan Davis. In AAA and I mean, double A and AAA especially, they're lacking some of that depth, some of that prospect depth in the outfield that they've they really built up over time. They have, a really, they have a ton of really good outfielders, but right now in AAA, they don't have that. Part of the reason why Jonathan Perlaz is number four is because he's really improved every single year he's been a part of this Cubs farm system. And now he's at the point where he can make an impact at the major league level if he does indeed officially sign back with the Chicago Cubs. So keep this as a, as a, as a little asterisk next to this Jonathan Perlaz ranking at number 40. Uh, but he provides very, very important depth. The power is legit. He's gotten more and more, uh, uh, more and more power as he's gone up through the system, and really, he is a a really good depth piece. Moving to number thirty nine, uh, you just kind of there's some guys in the system. They may not be the best players, but you kind of adopt them as some of your favorite prospects for whatever reason. Even if they're not, you don't think they're a, a top prospect in the system. Parker Chavers is one of those guys. I have him ranked number at number thirty nine in the Cubs farm system, and Parker Chavers is just. He looks good, man. I, I I first got my eye on Parker Chavers when he was at college in uh, in college at Coastal Carolina, uh, home of the Myrtle Beach Pelicans, right here. And with Parker Chavers, I really wanted the Cubs to draft him back in 2020. We, we saw that shortened draft. He didn't go in that short five round draft, and he decided to go back to college. It was a pretty common thing. We saw a lot of players do that. Uh, but Parker Chavers, what he represents is a super athletic center fielder. Right? He plays. He has some, some really decent speed. He plays a really, really good defensive center field. But he has some real nice juice in that bat, more than you'd expect. If you look back at his stats from the 2022 season, he got a late start because of injury. And when he returned, he wasn't quite himself. He wasn't putting up great stats. But I tell you what, the, the, like, the old school scout in me sees a player that looks really good on the baseball field. The swing, I've, I've pointed out on Twitter several times that his swing reminds me a lot of Bryce Harper's. Parker Chavers is not Bryce Harper. I'm, I'm like, don't get it mixed. He is not Bryce Harper, but the swing resembles that. And there's a lot of positives to build on when you have a swing that that's, that's that pretty. So watch out for Parker Chavers. He'll probably be in South Bend starting in the 2023 season. 
Look for him to get, make his way all the way up to double A. He's an older, older guy for his level, was definitely too old for the low A level in Myrtle Beach last year, but really look for him to climb up the ladder uh, as, as he progressive, progresses, especially in 2023. Moving down the list, we got at number 38, Riley Thompson is there at number 38 as far as my rankings go. Riley Thompson, I, I thought there was an outside chance that Riley would get drafted in a Rule 5 draft, draft that happened pretty recently. And my thinking is that he hasn't really been super healthy. The one season he was really healthy was in 2019. He pitched for the South Bend Cubs and he absolutely tore it up. He was their ace for the South Bend Cubs the entire season long. Looked really, really good. He has a really strong track record. He played at Louisville. He That's, that's a baseball player factory down there in Louisville, Kentucky. And Riley Thompson is a guy that has really good stuff. He's got a fastball that sits in the in the mid nineties. He's got a curveball that was really really good um, when he was drafted in 20, 2019. He's got that spike curve. He also has a really good changeup. The changeup was a pitch that I really loved back in twenty nineteen, and I thought it still looked pretty good. He didn't use it nearly as much as I thought he should have in twenty twenty two, but it's still a good pitch. And then he also identified a little slider that he was playing with. So. You have that four-pitch mix. I think that he also, like Jonathan Perlaza, I think Riley Thompson represents some, some depth for the Major League level. We'll see him in AA and AAA in 2023. Moving up the list here, we got number 37 is Pedro Ramirez. And Pedro Ramirez is sort of a fan favorite. He's kind of a, a smaller, not built out, he's, 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 a, a, he's not a small skinny guy. He's, he's a small guy. He plays second base. He can play some shortstop as well. Uh, I really project him as a second baseman, and really all he's done up to this point in his career has hit. He hit in the Dominican Summer League. That's where he kind of popped, was in that Dominican Summer League where he was actually a better performer with the bat than Christian Hernandez, who we all know Christian Hernandez. We'll see him later in a, in a future video, probably the last video, more than likely. Pedro Ramirez has hit better than Christian Hernandez. He hit in the Arizona uh, Summer League, in the Complex League. He came up to Myrtle Beach at the tail end of the 2022 season and really continued to hit. He doesn't have a ton of pop in that bat. And I'm really concerned about a bat first, second baseman with a, a hit first tool, right? There's not a whole lot to build off of. There's not a whole lot of, of projection in that body for Pedro Ramirez, but you can really you really can't argue with the results so far. And that's why I've slotted him in here at number 37. Moving up the list, we got number 36, and that's Nazir Mule. Nazir Mule was a draft pick in this most recent 2022 MLB draft. Mule is a guy that, he's a two-way player. He was drafted as a two-way player. Uh, scouts really liked him on the mound a whole lot better than at the plate, but he puts together really, really strong exit velocities at the plate. On the mound, that's where I think that he will continue to thrive, is on the mound when he's showing off that fastball. He's more, he, he is more of a pitcher than a thrower than you'd imagine from a high school draft pick that is this super, super athletic. And I think that athleticism is going to play really well as he continues to climb the ladder. We'll see. He may be a two-way player. He probably won't last. As, I mean, you're not ever betting on a guy to, to remain as a two-way player, but I think there's a good chance that he sticks on the mound and does really, really well. He'll be in the Complex League to start 2023. Maybe we see him in Myrtle Beach. I don't know how we see him as a two-way player, as a one-way player. We'll see. It's yet to be determined. Nazar Mule uh, is a guy that could soar up this list. Him at 36 is me kind of hedging my bets a little bit because we don't know a whole lot about him. He could really soar up these lists in future years. Number, number 35, you're talking about a guy that's soaring up lists. There's a really good chance that we see Adon Sanchez, who is a guy ranked number 35 here, soar up these lists. lists. He's a catcher. He was signed as an international free agent recently. You all know the story about Adon Sanchez, how he played for Venezuela in the Little League World Series. And in that Little League World Series, hit a home run in which David Ross was the color commentary on that call, said that he's a guy to watch out for in the future. And sure enough, here he is playing in the Cubs organization, looking to climb the ladder all the way to the big leagues where he can play for manager David Ross. Great, great story. But he's not only is he a great story, he, is, he was one of the top international free agent signings in his class. We'll see how he performs. He played in the Dominican Summer League last year. Well, we expect to see him in extended spring training, making it up to the States here in 2023. And we'll really see where that, where that goes. I don't expect him to make his way to Myrtle Beach this year. If he does, then he's way ahead of schedule. And we should be really happy about what we see with Adon Sanchez. Let's bring it back down to a guy that we've seen a whole lot more of. Number 34, I have Luis Verdugo ranked at number 34. He was a guy that spent the entire season last year in South Bend. Looked really good. By the end of the year, he was their strongest hitter at the plate. Luis, Luis Verdugo 
a few years ago, was he was that shortstop that we really wanted to see break out. He was our, our kind of breakout prediction for a lot of Cubs prospect followers that we really wanted to see that defense improve at shortstop but break out in a big way with the bat. Well, he's shifted over to third base. He, that defense is still really strong at third base, but the bat really began to, to turn around, right? So he put up really, he's really good gap-to-gap -gap power. I really love to see him to continue to build out his body, especially now that he's moved over to third base. I really think that defensive, that defensive prowess, prowess really at third base is something that can be really, really strong. And I think that if he continues to, to build out his body, I don't see that dipping over at third base. If he was still a shortstop, I, I wouldn't want to see as much build out with that body. Moved over to third base, I feel much more comfortable with that. And especially with him showing gap to gap power, a little more muscle, a little more strength may see that gap to gap power turn into over the fence power. So we'll see Luis Verdugo. We'll see him at manning third base for the Tennessee Smokies at the double A level in 2023. I mean, really excited to see what he does at the upper levels of the minors. Moving up the list, we don't have many, many guys left here today. Zach Lee is my 33, 33rd ranked prospect in the Cubs farm system. And Zach Lee is really, really gross. Like he's disgusting. It, it, it's, it's really tough to rank relief prospects because when they're relievers only, relievers at the major league level only bring so much value, right? They don't have, they're not going to win, uh, win you a whole bunch of games. They're going to save a whole bunch of games. But as far as that wins above re replacement number, that war number, they're not going to produce a whole lot of, they're not going to move the needle a ton, right? And so that becomes very, very difficult to rank prospects that are relief only. Now, looking at a guy like Zach Lee, he's up there with some of the best relief only prospects in all of baseball, in my opinion. Jeremiah Estrada is a guy that went up to the big leagues, skipped multiple levels, and showed off really impressive stuff. I think Zach Lee is right in line with what Jeremiah Estrada did, did this past year. We're going to see him in double-A this year. He's got a fastball that's disappearing. He's got a lot of ride on that fastball. It just disappears for batters, right? They're, they're expecting the, the, fa the fastball to be down the middle, and it turns up it's way higher than he expects because it, it has that, that ride up in the zone. He also has a wipeout slider that's really pretty. So the same two-pitch mix with the, the fastball and slider as Jeremiah Estrada, we really could see Zach, Zach Lee in Chicago this year, which is so, so exciting. Moving up, we got Miguel Amaya. Miguel Amaya is the 32nd ranked prospect in the farm system, according to my rankings. Miguel Amaya is a name we're super familiar with, right? We might be receiving, like getting some, some prospect fatigue on Miguel Amaya, but he's still really good. Obviously, he's been injured. He's dealt with, with his fair share of injuries. He went down with Tommy John, came back in 2022 about... Uh, most of the way, midway, most of the way through the season, and then became a, a DH as he was still recovering, right? So he he couldn't throw behind the plate, so they were working him out, working him out as a designated hitter. Went down with another another injury. We've we know he dealt with a Liz Frank injury this pat during this off season, but I'm really hoping that he can put in the work the rest of this off season and come back really strong. We know he can hit, like we know he's he's shown off the ability to to hit. He's got a little bit of pop. He has really good at bats. He doesn't strike out a ton. He walks a ton. He walks a lot. You love to see that. He's gotten really high regards, really high marks from his pitchers in terms of game managing. And that's a direction the Cubs might be going in, right? We've seen Wilson Contreras uh, hit the free agent market. They, the Cubs let him go. They're going to this, this style of game managers behind the plate because they feel like that's necessary. Well, Miguel Amaya brings that ability to the play, to behind the plate, I guess. In addition to his offensive talents, if he can stay healthy, we he's already on the 40-man roster. We could see Miguel Amaya in the big leagues in 2023. Some stuff has to break right for that to happen, but I, I still have confidence in him as a backup catcher in the big leagues. The last guy we'll talk about today, number 31 ranked in the farm system, is Reggie Preciado. And Reggie Preciado had a really crappy year in 2022. There's no other way around it. He came over in the uh, U Darvish trade to the San Diego Padres. He was a part of a prospect package plus Zach Davies. We won't go into that, but a prospect package from the San Diego Padres that came over. Obviously, Owen Casey has been the steal of that trade. He has been the highlight piece of that trade package. Reggie Preciado was a guy that I was highest on when it, I, I was one of the highest on Reggie Preci Preciado when he came over. And for me, it was. His, that lanky frame that he could still build out. He was a shortstop first, and he still played shortstop in 2022, but then his ability to, to, to switch hit, he brought a lot of qualities that I really, really liked. This year in Myrtle Beach, he struck out way, way too much. There were too many strikeouts from Reggie Preciado, 
and he really wasn't generating really good at bats. And even when he was putting the ball in play, it was a lot of ground balls. He was hitting the ball on the, on the ground a lot. And part of that was because of a really long, really long swing. It reminds me a little bit of what we've seen from Jonathan Sierra in the Cubs system from the past few years. That's not a comp that I like to put on Reggie Preciado, but I think that his track record and his what he brings to the table, the, the, the other things he brings to the table, I really am still a believer in Reggie Preciado. Don't go back and look at my rankings of him uh, about this time last year because I had him way, way, way higher. I had him in the top five in terms of my prospect rankings. But because he was so high before, I think it's important to remember that there's still... There was a reason why we believed in him back then. We should stick with that that mantra, that motto now, but still be a little bit more skeptical of what, of what he put together in the 2022 season. I think we see Reggie Preciado come back. We see him in Myrtle Beach again next year. There's nothing wrong with repeating, especially as a teenager. There's nothing wrong with repeating the low A level as a professional player when you've got your first taste last year, especially when he didn't get a whole lot of at-bats. He dealt with that injury. That took him out for a good chunk of last season. I'm really excited to see what, what, what Reggie Preciado puts together in 2023. So that's my rundown. A quick rundown one more time. I've got number 40, Jonathan Perlaza. Number 39, Parker Chavers. 38 is Riley Thompson, with 37 being Pedro Ramirez. Number 36 is Nazir Mule. Number 35 is Adon Sanchez. 34 is Luis Verdugo. 33 is Zach Lee. Number 32 is Miguel Amaya. And number 31 is Reggie Preciado. So... If you guys want to read the whole list, I'll be back here soon giving a rundown of prospects ranked number 30 through 21. I'll be back soon. If you guys want to read the whole list, be my guest. Go over to Northside Bound. Check it out. You can go to northsidebound.com. There's a little tab that says rankings. Uh, open that up. You can see all my rankings, Greg Zumax rankings, Todd Johnson's ratings, and our, our rankings as a combined unit. But if you want to check mine out, go there. If you want more prospect content, Come back to the Northside Bound YouTube page. We'll have plenty of that moving forward. And if you want this in, in YouTube form, in podcast form, well, you'll see me hosting with Greg Zumak and with Brian Smith over in any podcasting platform you can find, Cubs on Deck. The Cubs on Deck podcast is a new project that we're putting together this offseason. Uh, I'm really excited to see where it goes. Be sure to subscribe, subscribe to those podcast platforms. Subscribe to this YouTube page here. Subscribe, like, comment, see what, say what you think. My big question for you guys is, who do I have ranked too low? Who do I have ranked too high here? Who am I missing from this 31 through 40 rankings of players? Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and we'll talk to you guys soon.